Today I'm making a night helmet, specifically a salad helmet, not a salad helmet. I just thought it looked cool. That, that's pretty much my motivation for a lot of the things I build. Does it look cool? But also your comments, which I got a lot of positive feedback for medieval stuff when I threw that out there on the last video during the Wrecker helmet build. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. For this build, you'll need, why did I just re-record? I have like a thousand takes of me saying that. All the same stuff as usual. Craft foam, floor mat foam, half cylinder foam, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, contact cement, plastidip, paint, magnets, Chicago screws, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. I'm actually not going to use my standard helmet template for this one. <laughs> Crazy, right? Now, this is actually designed to fit over a specific actor whose head is differently shaped than mine. So I made a new template on a cereal box, like always. Some of these can actually fit on two millimeter foam sheets, the standard ones from craft stores. So that's an option. Just saying. But I ended up tracing them onto EVA foam floor mats, the slightly thinner kind. I don't always have a choice in the thickness of the floor mats, but I try to be consistent for each individual build. Otherwise you get some variation. So I trace those on, cut them out with scissors and a box cutter, and then refine them on the belt sander. We're in the old workshop today because I'm dog sitting. This is Heidi. I'm allergic to her. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> So if there's jingling or tiny dog footsteps in the background, that's uh, that's what that is. When the edge was smooth, which is super important to get a good seam, I heat formed them with my heat gun. And then I glued the EVA foam pieces together with contact cement, as always. Well, I think I said in the previous video, I'll use super glue for detail pieces, but contact cement flexes. And the whole point of building out of EVA foam is that if your prop falls off a shelf or more likely gets crushed in checked luggage, it's not gonna shatter it'll just bend and absorb the impact and then just bounce back. You should always wear a mask while using contact cement because the fumes aren't great for you. Most glues and chemicals, the fumes aren't great for you. Generally, if you're getting a headache, that means you really should be wearing a mask. Although in that situation, you'd want to take a break because the masks actually cut down on your oxygen intake a little bit. I've had to become very aware of this lately. Hopefully these templates will yield a more rounded dome than my typical template because I'm really going for that medieval look, not necessarily. Star Wars Imperial look. What? What is an unfinished Orville gun? Oh, right, that's uh, that's an unfinished Orville gun in the background. That's just kind of at the sanding station. I actually lost some footage while I was making the Orville blaster, so I had to rebuild it right up until the sanding stage. And now I have this handle that could be another Orville blaster. I, I don't know why I'd need another one, but I don't know, maybe I can make it into a crossbow or something. So it just hangs out at the sanding station, occasionally propping up dome template parts. When the glue became tacky, I attach the pieces. I do them in sections like this instead of all at once because it takes time to apply the glue and you have a limited working time to attach it. So I end up having to do, I don't know, only three feet of seams at a time. That makes sense. Once they're all together, I had a dome. I let that air out for a while and then reheat formed it. I'm basically just heating it up without, you know, squishing it. And this will cause it to re-expand and even out any of the lumpy parts from when I initially heat formed it. And look at that, way rounder. And then I spun it around on a Lazy Susan, just for the camera. Look at it go. Next, I worked on all the other helmet parts, such as the bever, the brim, and a neck guard. I also think there's a nose piece in this particular helmet. I don't know the technical term, but that's just where it ends up on the face. In order to get it to flare out, I had to cut and sand until the edge that connects with the dome was on a bit of an angle. Then I glued it in. I contact cemented the brim on. Now for the bever, I figured that out based on the dimensions of the actor's face, traced it onto foam, cut it out, and heat formed it just the same as I did the dome. Yeah, see that? that definitely needs another heat forming because it came out a bit lumpy, but I'll do that after it's glued. Next, I'll make the neck portion, which is a little complicated, but not really. I mean, it's it's two extra pieces. It's two pieces. So one of those is under the chin, the bottom of the chin, bottom of the jaw, really, and the other is sort of an Adam's apple type piece. I had to cut one edge slanted just like I did on the brim. Again, I heat formed them. See, I would do all of the heat forming and gluing all at once, but I was literally figuring out a template for one aspect of the helmet, and once that was done, I didn't want waste any time. It actually works out because you, you have to wait while you're contact cementing for at least 10 or 15 minutes. Once the lower jaw, lower jaw, once the under jaw and Adam's apple part were glued together, I covered up the seam with Alex Fast Dry. And there's the dog. I'm down here. I also covered up the seams on the bever and the helmet itself. Huh. 
That's coming out kind of kind of like a half Vader. Oh, I think I'll be able to utilize this for uh, Inquisitors, like Star Wars Inquisitors, not span uh, medieval Inquisitors. Also, make sure to balance this on a coffee can while you're doing it. To attach the face pieces to the helmet, I'm gonna be using Chicago screws and magnets. I did lightly sand the seams to smooth them out a bit. My first attempt, I actually kind of had backwards, but I don't know, maybe that'll come in handy for like a, an extra if I do a medieval short film or something. I don't know, apparently leg templates work for xenomorphs, so who knows? Did a little bit of spot sanding with my sanding sponges, and then I did a quick test fitting to see if I like the look, and I do, and it's looking good. God, I almost don't want to put the nose piece on. But I got to finish what I start, so I retraced that using black craft foam this time for no particular reason other than I was out of the white foam. I guess it could make painting a little bit easier, but generally anything that has to look metallic should have a base coat of black. And if you want to be shiny, you need to do several coats. So I don't know. Maybe this will cut down on the coats. I think this was a failure too. Yeah, because I tried to do it like the same way as the... I don't know what I was thinking. That that curve, like it shouldn't go inward. Oh, you know what? That's that's me realizing it right there. So I angled the curve outward, cut those pieces out, retraced them so that I could fix the templates later. See, this is why I started in cereal box cardboard. Figuring out the templates is a lot of mixing and matching. It's just save on the good card stock that I use when I scan them in and make them available to you guys. There will be a link to the final refined templates in the description down below. Oh, I'm using a Molotow paint pen for this. Their silver is really good for prop painting but it came with white and that's great for EVA foam so it gets as much use for what it's meant for. I heat form those they'll take less time than the floor mat foam because they're thinner so be aware of that. Oh that's hot that's hot. Also be aware of that heat guns are hot. Who knew? I figured out where they were gonna go on the helmet, marked that off, and drilled a hole for the Chicago screws. Then I glued one of them in place to hold it in there. I'm gonna cover it up with a strip of foam with way too much hot glue on it. My God, that sweatshirt is hideous. Awful sweatshirt. So glad I retired that sweatshirt. I thought of painting sweatshirt, you know, because it's already covered in spots, but no. The magnets are inset above the ears, I suppose. Did test fitting the nose part. I repeated the process for the bever. You can see I traced where it's supposed to line up when it's closed, you're gonna have to periodically tighten these screws, just so you know. Because the one on screw as you open and close the bever. I put some magnets in it to help align it. Those align with the nose portion to hold them in place. Kind of goofy from the front, but from the side, oh, so good. Then I attached the neck piece. I actually contact cemented that one in place. Which gives slightly less motion, but whatever. I love how that looks from the side. Then I made this piece for the front. As an experiment, I made it out of this adhesive side foam, which seems to work. So it's like a giant sticker. I don't know if it'll come up over time, but maybe the plastidip process will hold it in place. Who's to say? I attached it to the forehead and puttied that seemingly insignificant dart seam at the top there. I know you're probably thinking, what, what's the point of that teeny tiny little dart? But trust me, if you just try and stick a totally flat shape onto a round surface and expect it to conform without a notch in the top there, then it's gonna wanna push outward in an angled bulge that just won't adhere. So, you know, I feel like I could add just a little bit more detail. So I use these foam strips, sort of half cylinder details, to frame some of the edges. This is partly decorative, but it can also be used to save on putty by covering up seams. Wish I thought of that before I puttied. I covered each piece in several layers of Plastidip until the coat was even. Real quick, I ran out of Plastidip and had to switch to gloss black acrylic, which if I'm being honest, I use a lot more these days. It's a lot cheaper and essentially does the same thing. And if you do enough coats, it can even come out shinier than Plastidip. Dip, which yields a more reflective surface. I'm actually not going for reflectivity on this one because it makes it more difficult to photograph. For example, the Thor hammer was done in gloss black acrylic and I actually got complaints about how shiny it was. And it's like, really? That's what bugs you? <laughs> it's too pretty. Oh, and also quick shop tip, bent up wire coat hangers make great paint stands. And then I paint each piece metallic individually. This is sort of a dull aluminum. Then I went over it with silver rub and buff. I'm not going for the complete mirror chrome look. Uh, I want it to look a little bit worn. And also I'm trying to use up the rub and buff. It's got a shelf life. And if I don't use it in a couple of years, it's just gonna turn into a rock. The interior doesn't need to be as thorough because for the most part, it won't be seen. Not to mention if it's a hot day, you know, you don't want to be breathing fumes. Of course, no one's gonna wear this for quite a while, so it'll be long dry by then. But the reason I'm putting this in here is from certain angles, you'll be able to catch a glimpse of edges of the interior. So this absolutely needs to be done. The area towards the top of the bever should definitely be done. And if I'm doing like 
55% of the interior. I might as well do the whole thing. It doesn't have to be as shiny. I can have these dark streaks in here, but it, it can't be solid black. That's gonna look kind of unusual. Seriously, it looks like a slightly ornate Vader. So because it's black underneath, I'm getting these areas that I can't quite get into with the silver, but that's giving off this weathering effect that dirt and tarnish is sort of collected in the in the grooves. And you know, the, the guy, who, the, the knight who wears this helmet, he's sure he's gonna polish it, but he doesn't have time to get into all the grooves. Actually, I think they would have like a, like a page, some servant or whatever do that, I don't, I don't know. Not to mention the coverage is really uneven and that's looking like sort of tarnished streaks. I, I like it, you know, I think that, that, that look works. I like it. Now let's connect the pieces. All right, there we go. Should we do another fly around? Nah, let's go old school George Lucas PowerPoint Prezi wipe. Oh yeah, getting all 1998 up in here. Kidding, here's a fly around. Still though. Now I can storm Castle Jake Skull. That force, that seemed force. Aha, William Jake's lair. It's only a model. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to see future prop builds. Once again, I'd like to thank my patrons. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out the links in the description down below. Anything pledged goes towards improving the video quality, prop functionality, and shop equipment, and allowing me to put together bigger and more exciting projects for you to enjoy on the channel. Happy crafting. See you later. Oh my god, your eye crusties. Did you just mess up my foam shirt? It's a custom print and you slobbered all over it. Coffee foam, dog approved. Who's a good girl? Sit. That's a shake. There you go. Okay, down. And cut. And scene. I really am allergic though.